In this lesson, we're going to learn about what is known as a dominant strategy. I should note that sometimes I use the term strategy. Uh, in the initial lessons, we use the term action. For our cases, when players are playing what is known as a simultaneous move game or a single shot game where they're only making one decision and they're doing it simultaneously and they're picking one action, a strategy is the same thing as an action. We're going to see in later lessons that that's not always the case, but for our purposes now, we can think of a strategy as the same thing as an action. So we're going to learn about a dominant strategy through yet another example. And let's draw a new game to get practice. We're not going to do the prisoner's dilemma again. And we're going to draw it in normal form. So we have player two. And for simplicity, we can just say he can play high, middle, or low. This corresponds to the row that he chooses. And let's give him some payoffs. And let's give player two. He can play left, center, or right. Okay, very simple. And let's give him some payoffs. So he can play, he can get one. Okay, so what is a dominant strategy? I'm gonna give a very broad definition. I encourage you to go to some of the references and look up the actual mathematical definition. But a dominant strategy is an action for a player that is best in terms of highest utility, regardless of the other player's action. So what we need to do here is we want to see if any of these players have what are known as dominant strategies. So to see what a dominant strategy is, let's look at player two. Remember player two can choose high, middle, or low. Now, oh, I'm sorry, I gave them both player two. Let's make this guy player one because it's, he's not playing against himself. Okay, so if player one is playing L, left, what does player two prefer in terms of highest utility? Three, seven, or eight? Well, if he knew player one was playing left, he would play H because eight is better than seven and eight is better than three. Okay, so we could say that this is the best when player one plays L. What about when player one plays C? Player two, does player two prefer one, zero, or negative five? Of course, player two prefers higher numbers, so he prefers one. And what about if player one plays R? Does player two prefer four, two, or three? Well, of course, he prefers four. So what we have here is regardless of what player one does, player two would always prefer to play H. So we can say H is a dominant strategy. Put a little D there for dominant. It's a dominant strategy for player two. How about player one? Okay, let's assume that player two is playing L so that we're down here. Does player one prefer four, 10, or seven? Of course, he prefers 10. Because 10 is higher than seven, 10 is higher than four. What about if player two were to play M? Now we already said that player two already prefers to play H no matter what, but we're just doing hypotheticals here. What if player two was playing M? Would player one prefer six, nine, or four? Of course, nine, nine is better. Nine is higher than six and four. And we can make the same argument here. That player one would prefer five when player two plays H because five is higher than one and five is higher than two. But we see here is that regardless of what player two does, if player two plays H, M, or L, player one would want to play C. So C is a dominant strategy for player one. So what does this mean? The punchline here is, is this. If both players, I mean, this extends to more than two players, but because this example is with two players, I'll just say both. It could be if all players, but if both players have a dominant strategy, then the strategy profile, which is the action for player one and the action for player two, or the strategy for player one and strategy for player two, the strategy profile that specifies 
both players play the dominant strategy is a Nash equilibrium. So in this case, unlike the prisoner's dilemma game, when we had to go through and check every single box and say, okay, does player one have an incentive to deviate? Does player two have an incentive to deviate? And then we figured out if they did or didn't and then classified them as Nash equilibrium. We did not have to do that in this game. All we had to do was figure out that player two has a dominant strategy to play H, player one has a dominant strategy to play C, so H, C is a Nash equilibrium. Okay, so it's important to note though, it says that if both players have a dominant strategy, players don't always have a dominant strategy. For example, if I made a quick change to this payoff matrix here, and when we turn this seven into a nine, okay, bear with me for a second here, we see now that when player one plays L, player two would actually prefer to play M. So this would no, so H would no longer be a dominant strategy. The reason is that if player one were to play C or to play R, player two would wanna play H, but if player one were to play L, player two would wanna play M. So H would no longer be a dominant strategy. So a, a Nash equal or a game doesn't have to have dominant strategies, but if it does, both players playing the dominant strategy is a Nash equilibrium.